students were here, Jay, an hour, hour and a half before this thing started. This place is going to be rocking. The buzz is back in Coral Gables. Miami trying to become ACC champions for the first time since a decade ago in 2013. And Pitt trying to do it for the first time. It's the Panthers who win the tip. We are underway. Pittsburgh with the basketball. Heaving in this game. Defensive rebounding uh, for Miami. Anthony Walker comes up clutch. He's making his first start today on senior day alongside fellow senior Harlan Beverly. Nigel Pack returns after he missed the Florida State game a week ago with a knee injury. Wong, step back three, off the mark. And then on the other side for Pitt, that right there, defending the three-point line, in particular in screen and roll situations. That's what Miami wants to do. Pittsburgh, all five starters are transfers, and yet Jeff Capel has blended this team beautifully. Now have a chance to make some history, become ACC regular season champions. What's been the key to the turnaround this season, Malcolm? Ball movement. Uh, look how Pittsburgh spaces the floor, and then their three-point shooting ability. Uh, that has been the key to go along with some really excellent defense. Hinson lines up a three and drills it to open the scoring. That right there. They're a team that averages close to 10 threes made per game. When we spoke to Coach Jim Laranega of Miami, he said we must defend the three-point line against this Pittsburgh team. They're one of the better three-point shooting teams in college basketball. Jordan Miller on the move. Tough assignment for Blake Hinson. That's going to be a matchup to watch all afternoon long. Five on the timer. Anthony Walker decides to shoot. Left it short. Beverly, the offensive rebound. He cleans up the spill. Foul called on Beverly. I think it's a classy gesture and a huge game. Big implications of Jim Laranega still starting the two seniors, Anthony Walker, Harlan Beverly, despite them not starting all season long. And he knows the implications, obviously, now. But the question is, how long does he leave them in? It looks like he's going to go to his normal starters now. Jamarius Burton knocks it down. Pittsburgh playing with a ton of confidence to start this game. For me, uh, this game is going to decide, in my opinion, who's the player of the year in the league. Uh, Jamarius Burton, Isaiah Wong, watch that matchup. I think those two guys right now, front runners for player of the year in the ACC. Beverly scoop to the hoop. He has all four for Miami. Burton, so good at backing down a guard. Beverly, great defense, though. Harlan Beverly, a terrific start to this contest. Great feed. Walker rocks the rim. Well, that's all set up. Jordan Miller hurt Pitt in their first game. But he had 17 in that game in the second half. As you see, a little nice backdoor cut, but Pitt decided to double team. And Miller, such a great passer right here. He sees the double coming, gives it up. The rotation's late on the other end. And Walker rocks the rim. Beautiful offense uh, by Miami. So Beverly and Walker making their first start of the season because it's senior night, and they account for all six of the Hurricanes' points. Hinson shooting into the Miami student section, which is loud and proud. It's a blackout there tonight. They call themselves the Eye of the Storm, and it's a Category 5 in Coral Gables. And what an atmosphere. Both these programs, uh, Pitt and Miami, have created a legitimate home court advantage. And I'll say it again, uh, these students have been here early in this game, and they are loud. Norchad O'Meara now into the game for Miami. 
Pack serves it up for Omir, and he lays it in. When we spoke with Jeff Capel this afternoon in shoot-around, he said, Pick and roll defense is going to be key in this game. The rotations on the back end must be there. If not, Miami will get lobs to the rim. Hinson through contact. Omir almost lost it. Here's Juan. Too much on it. That's pretty good D by Jamarius Burton. And that's all you can ask for with Isaiah Wong. Make him shoot contested jumpers. Passing out of the double team. Finds Hinson. Misses this one. But he'll let it fly all night long. Omir on Federico. Federico. Two guys up for ACC Defensive Player of the Year, and that's why Federico got a piece of it. Omir turns and shoots. Misfires, but an offensive rebound by Jordan Miller. He is always in perfect position. He is, and you absolutely said it right, though. That matchup of Federico Federico versus Norchad Omir. That time, Federico commits the foul. Jordan Miller at the line when we return. Just getting started. Two teams battling atop the ACC. Target. One of the best stories in college basketball this season. Voted 14 of 15 in the ACC preseason poll. Now with a win, would be the number one seed in the ACC tournament. What a turnaround. And what's interesting is we were speaking with ESPN bracketologist Joe Lenardi, and he said that the Panthers are still on the bubble, would need to either win today or get one win in that ACC tournament, or they could be in trouble, which I, I can't believe. Well, uh, regardless of what it is, I know Jeff Capel, uh, they want to take all the doubt out and get a win here on the road. Uh, for me, though, it's still clear-cut who is the coach of the year in the ACC. The job that he has done, you talked about it, preseason pick 14, not too many people thought Pitt would be in this position with a chance uh, to be regular season champs of the ACC. Yeah, Jeff Capel goes from maybe the hottest seat in college basketball to undoubtedly the ACC Coach of the Year, which will be announced on Monday. These Panthers trailing by four on the road. A terrific atmosphere here in Coral Gables. Early impressions as both teams are up for a heavyweight fight to decide who can hang at ACC regular season championship banner. So Bandy off the mark. Well, early on, both teams doing an excellent job contesting jumpers. Not many open looks early on. Rolls around, doesn't fall for Nigel Pack. Pittsburgh has missed four straight shots, a scoring drought of the last two minutes and 30 seconds. Great feed inside. Awkward though. Federico, Federico didn't gather, went right up with it. Offensive foul. Long went right into Burton, and Ted Valentine was right there to call the charge. And that's why Jamarius Burton is at the top of the list for me, player of the year. When you talk about complete players, yes, he's a guy that can score for you. Yes, he's got good assist numbers. But for me, his defense, in particular against some of the better guards, not just in the ACC, but in college basketball, that's what you have in Isaiah Wong. Uh, that's what makes him a special player. That's a big-time defensive play. So for as good as Pittsburgh has been all season long, and we're heaping tons of praise on them, they did go to South Bend and lose 88-81 on Wednesday in Mike Bray's final home game. That's a goaltend, easy call. North Chad O'Meara blocking the cylinder. So how do you bounce back quickly? Because it's a tough turnaround. You're going to another road game. What's the recipe today for the Panthers? Well, that's life in uh, the ACC, but it's been the mantra for Jeff Capel. Let's go 1-0, and and he's been consistent with that every year, whether they're coming off a win or a loss. Uh, let's focus on what's uh, in front of you right now, and that's this game. A lot at stake, and I think 
Uh, again, that's history for these guys right now. They know what's on the line tonight. Pack on the move, right to the rim. Miami getting to the rim with ease to start this game. Ten of their 12 points in the paint. So Bandy lost the handle. Who was it off of last? They say it'll stay Pittsburgh ball off Bensley Joseph last. And this is just a great closeout uh, by Joseph. And then uh, they're very active. Both these teams, I think, underrated defensively. And in particular, they're very active in the passing lanes. Perfect position for the follow, Nike Sabandi. And we got a double technical. Joseph and, and Sabandi, they've been jarring. And we got a veteran referee ref, uh, crew. They're not going to allow this to get out of hand. They're going to get it under control right away. Both guys were jarring the previous play before. And now they're going uh, to clean it up. Sabandi handed the ball. All right here again. A nice little shove, and then afterwards he hands the ball, hits him right in the face. And Joseph and throws it right it back. Throws it right back. And the refs, I'm telling you right now, with this crew, uh, they are not playing around. So any extracurricular stuff, I can tell you right now, uh, had a chance to speak with Teddy Valentine before this game, Jamie Lucky. Teddy was doing games back when I was playing. And yeah. you, you're, he's not going to allow anything to go on extra quickly. So these guys, both teams need to understand now. It's over. So play to the whistle, and that's it. Tim Cloggerty and Jamie Lucky at the monitor to review this. So Savandi gives it to Joseph, throws it right back. And I think, again, Tech, I don't think there's anything else after that. They're just going to clean it up. No elbows were thrown, no punches thrown. So, again, I think they're just going to clean up all the extracurricular John. And then, obviously, anytime the ball goes in, just leave it alone. Either hand it to the ref or just let it bounce, let them pick it up. And I think this is what started it right here. Uh, they started John. So the refs let it go. And then Sabandi gets a bucket afterwards and let Joseph know. Jamie Lucky talking with Jeff Capel. Joseph still fired up over on the Miami sideline. So both Nike Sabandi and Bensley Joseph possessed a class a technical foul offsetting technical so we're not going to get any free throws it'll just be miami ball so unsportsmanlike technicals and we play on and i guarantee you right now <laughs> both teams and coaches have been warned Pull up, pop. Too much on it. And that's a great job of blocking out of that time by Pitt. That's a great team rebounding. Hinson from the logo buries it. Two threes already for Blake Hinson tonight. You have to be there on the catch. Uh, he is one of the better three-point shooting players in college basketball, and he's got a quick release. If you're not there with him, Blake Henson on the catch, it's too late, and he's got unlimited range. Norchad O'Meer rolls off the rim, a foul call. Guillermo Diaz-Graham, the freshman out of Spain. And you'll see this right here. Uh, Blake Henson, one of the better pick and pops players in, in college. Again, he's going to pick and he's going to relocate. And again, you have to be connected, and that's why screen and roll defense is so important against this Pittsburgh team. In particular, when you're defending Blake Henson, uh, he will pick and then he's going to pop on either side. So as one regular season comes to a close, lacrosse is just hitting its stride here at the beginning of March. A triple header. 
next Saturday on ACC Network. It starts with Notre Dame and Syracuse, and then over to Ohio State, Notre Dame, a top five matchup. Towson, the number one Virginia, finishes it off. A monster triple header next Saturday right here on ACC Network. Burton, long reached in, and Burton plowed right through. Jamarius Burton, a man on a mission. And both these teams will break off their offense and either post up a guard or just go isolation situations. If there's a matchup they like, almost pro-style offense, again, they're going to identify the matchup they like and see if your guy can stop it. Poplar lost the handle going baseline. Still seven seconds on the shot clock. Ball underneath Miami's hoop. Keething on these out of bounds underneath. They do a lot of screen to screener actions and then they'll run Wong off the screen. That time really good the defense by Jamarius Burton. Beverly from the corner. Wong there and he's fouled. Eight minutes into this game, Isaiah Wong scoreless so far, but can change that from the foul line. Well, now early on in this game, it's Miami with some second chance opportunities. Uh, going back to the first matchup of these two teams, uh, Pittsburgh dominated the offensive glass, had 17 second chance points. And uh, when we spoke with coach Jim Laranega, he said that was gonna be key in this game. But can they keep Pittsburgh off the offensive glass? Three offensive rebounds already for the Hurricanes. Wong makes them both. Fires Miami back in front. You just get the feeling this is going to be a back and forth game. I have a feeling it's probably going to come down to like their first meeting, uh, one or two possessions at the end of the game. Greg Elliott, his first shot off the mark. You mentioned that first matchup, Malcolm. Miami led for most of that game in Pittsburgh. They were up 8, 68-60 with 2.05 left. Pitt ended on an 11-0 run to win by three. North Chad O'Meara adds to the Miami advantage. Sabandi on the drive into traffic and it rolls in. Nike Sabandi put just enough on it. Body control off the charts. My goodness, uh, that is degree of difficulty 10. Take the hit, float in the air, and then adjust. Eyes on the rim the entire time. That's a big time move and finish by Nike Sabandi. Here's Henson. All the way to the rim. He missed it. Everything but the finish for Blake Henson. Wong in transition, air ball. Beverly saves it and it bounces right to Miller. Well, early in this game, Harlan Beverly has been huge uh, for Miami. That time, loose ball, heads up play to throw it right back to Jordan Miller. Inside, count it, plus the foul, Federico, Federico. A chance to tie it at 20 when we come back. The big men starting the battle here at South Florida. This is an awesome back and forth game of the ACC. In a game that'll decide who is the number one seed in the ACC tournament next week, a win would also serve as a huge resume win when you talk about the NCAA tournament. Yeah, I think both these teams, again, I, I in my opinion, uh, are locked in. I think for Miami, it's about positioning and, and what seed they will get. You look at their net and then the uh, wins versus quad one. Uh, for me, uh, they're a team uh, that could potentially go on another deep NCAA tournament run. Tied at 20. Pittsburgh and Miami going punch for punch. You can feel the intensity from both teams. They know what is on the line atop the ACC.
Midway through this first half, Isaiah Wong's been quiet. Risky cross-court pass, and it's intercepted. Hinson, Miller all over him. Spins through a double team, rolls off the rim, no good. Transition three, Beverly made it, but wave off the three, a travel called first. And that's a break for Pitt. Really good transition offense by Miami. Heads up play prior to that. Isaiah Wong tipped it out. Knew he couldn't rebound it, but tipped it out and started the break. So Bandy lines it up and hits it. Fires Pittsburgh back in front. The Pittsburgh does a great job spacing the floor. And again, all their guys, you must be there on the catch. So Bandy, another guy uh, with a quick release off the catch. Pittsburgh on a 6-0 run. Wong spins into the lane. Another air ball. That's two for him today. And credit uh, that time, Sabandi. Uh, they're making it really difficult for him. And those are just individual battles right there. Again, uh, they're not giving much help. Sabandi's had the hot hand, now caught in a double team. Five seconds to shoot. Elliott in trouble. Sabandi has to go up with it. One on the shot clock. He got it away, but it didn't hit rim. That's a shot clock violation. Uh, we're seeing great defense by both of these teams. And both these teams do a great job spacing, but then also a ball screen. So you'll see a lot of actions uh, with both these teams. So the rotations need to be really good uh, out of those uh, hedges or double teams. I'll tell you what, we just showed NCAA tournament seeding according to ESPN's Joe Lenardi. You do not want to see these two teams in your region on Selection Sunday. Very, very difficult to match up against, in particular uh, because their ability to shoot the ball, but that's twice now. Uh, really unforced turnovers. Uh, two travels uh, by Miami, and uh, those are just missed opportunities, missed possessions. Now, obviously, the only good thing with that, it's not a live ball turnover, so you don't allow uh, Pittsburgh to get out in transition, uh, but you certainly want to cut down on those turnovers. Five turnovers in this first half, but four of them have come in the last three minutes. It's allowed Pittsburgh to nose in front. Six-nothing run for the Panthers, looking for more. Here's Nelly Cummings. Finds Burton. Long on Burton. And Burton wins that matchup again. Jamarius Burton. He makes the difficult look easy. And look at the ball screen defense uh, by Pittsburgh. They're doing a great job hedging hard on the ball screens and then recovering. Bensley Joseph weaving through traffic. These two teams making acrobatic shot after acrobatic shot. Well, there are going to be no open looks in this game. The both way these teams are playing defense right now, active in the passing lanes. Great feed inside, Omir misses the layup, regathers, and one! Jim Blair in basketball and his ability to finish around the basket is a reason why he's shooting close to 60% uh, from the field uh, on the season. And that's just a big time grown man move right there. He is so strong early on. He is impacting this game with his rebounding and an ability to finish around the basket. Eight points, five rebounds, both lead Miami so far tonight. And he'll have a chance to try and complete the and one and tie this game at 25. You'll hear us remind you throughout the game, so much on the line in this regular season finale. Winner of this game 
gets a share of the ACC regular season title with Virginia, but both teams have the tiebreaker over the Cavaliers. So the winner of this game is your one seed in Greensboro in, ne in next week's ACC tournament. Post defense for the guards is going to be huge for Miami. Again, they're going to post up uh, Jamarius Burton if they think he has an advantage, and that's what they're doing right now, uh, just breaking on the offense and then letting him go to work. Burton, that's big-time move. And again, they're going to have to make a decision. Uh, do we go double? Because right now they think uh, he has a size advantage on Joseph. They're going to let him break off and do what he just did. Could very well end up as your ACC player of the year, Jamarius Burton. Has it here. Finds Elliott. Transition three. Too much on it. O'Meara grabs the rebound. Pack splits the double team. Miami has numbers. Miller's foul. Miami missing a lot of layups in this first half, albeit that one was, was a foul. Uncharacteristic. But that's got to be a and one back to the previous play again. Uh, Miami stays home. And again, this is why Pitt is very difficult to match up against because they have three-point shooters all around. If you go double, Jamarius Burton, one of the better assist guys in the ACC, he'll find him. just playing with an energy and a confidence that's contagious for this Pittsburgh team, not just today, but all season long. And he's been the leader uh, defensively and offensively. He does a little bit of everything for this team. And again, uh, in my opinion, in my vote, uh, he is uh, right at the top of the list uh, for player of the year in the ACC. Burton again. Sabandi, step back three, well short. Bomir, Burton reaches in, Poplar open, and drills it from the corner. Luga Poplar. Trying to answer. Miller all over him. Forces the miss. Pack for three. No good. Wong saves it. That's now six offensive rebounds for Miami. Can they continue to cash in with second chance points? Wide open. Poplar hits it again. Timeout Pittsburgh. Back to back threes from Wuga Poplar. Ball movement, unselfish play. Omer the first time, dribble drive, kick to Poplar. And then this time, Nigel Path with the beautiful find. Miami on a run, up six. It's bow time. A sandwich this good speaks for itself. But when you're talking hand-breaded, boldly seasoned chicken with thick-cut pickles on a buttery toasted bun, well, we'll say it again and again. Bow's Chicken Sandwich only at Bojangles. It's bow time. I'm a screen-addicted tween. And if I'm not posting on social media, I don't feel seen. Oh, my God, Mom, you got to nope. look at this. Keeping my eyes on the road is paying off with DriveWise. Boring. Get DriveWise from all state and save for avoiding mayhem. A sold-out crowd here at Coral Gables. Miami on a 13-2 run. Everybody on their feet. Uh, this environment here, I said it at the beginning, uh, what Jim Laranega has created here. Uh, these students were here early. This place is rocking. And this is why we love March Madness. Largest lead of the game for either team. Miami with all the momentum. And they forced a turnover coming out of the Jeff Capel timeout. 
over the last three minutes hurricanes on a 13 to 2 run and what Miami is doing uh, really well now they are blitzing the ball screen so the bigs are stepping out uh, trapping and then the rotation on the back end has been very good and they're very active in the passing lanes long quiet first half misses that layup He's missed all five shots he's taken tonight. And that's uh, really uh, been the theme. You said it, uh, Jay. They've missed a lot of layups and opportunities uh, that they normally make. Casey called for an off-ball foul. Sabandi had space, decided not to shoot. How about Jorge Diaz Graham, the seven foot freshman from Spain? That's a big time three to cut the lead in half. And that's what he brings different uh, from Federico Federico. He has the ability to step out beyond the arc and spread the defense. Burton cut the passing lane, Pack regathers. 10 seconds to shoot. Isaiah Wong has a mismatch, calling for the clear out. Spins his way in. Diaz Graham thought he got all ball. A foul was the call. Isaiah Wong is so shifty just when you think you have him. Uh, but right now, Miami's still up three. There are all to Terry Holland from. Jim Laranega, friend, mentor, Holland, obviously a legend in the ACC and in Virginia, died six days ago at age 80. You know, Jim Laranega, obviously a, a lot of people know, was the assistant coach on those final four teams in Virginia with Ralph Sampson. I did not know that he was at Davidson as a 21-year-old. First head or assistant coaching job was because of Terry Holland. I could have sat in his office yesterday for hours, had a chance to spend a considerable time with Coach L and uh, the stories and uh, some of the great things that he talked about with Coach Holland. Really, what a great tribute uh, to a legendary, uh, not only coach, but human being. Well, there would certainly be something beautiful if Miami were to win today. They'd share an ACC title with Terry Holland's beloved Virginia Cavaliers. Pittsburgh trying to play spoiler as Norchad O'Meara goes up top to rock the rim. Go check the screws on that one. <laughs> that, uh, that rim is hurting right now. What a beautiful lob and find uh, by Isaiah Wong. Big play after big play. Nellie Cummings tried to answer with a three and it rimmed out. Poplar in transition. How about it? Wooga Poplar dials it in from deep for the third time in this first half. And they're just not finding him in transition. Poplar's taken three shots. They've all been from three, and he's made them all as Pittsburgh turns it over. Well, in transition, Miami's doing a great job pushing the pace. And then Poplar, he's just uh, laying back on the three-point line. And Pitt, the rotation and transition D has not been there with him on the catch, and he's made them pay. And alley -oop followed up by a three, gets the crowd in it, forces the turnover, and Wong gives it right back. This has been a first half to forget for Isaiah Wong. Three turnovers, no made shots, as three points have all come from the foul line. And, and credit Pitt, uh, they're doing a great job uh, with that pack line D. Again, when he's driving, uh, there's bodies there or guys that are active with their hands and trying to slow him down. Sabandi calling for it, gets it, goes baseline. Scoop to the hoop, Nike Sabandi, much needed answer for Pittsburgh. His ability to adjust mid-air has been impressive. That's twice now in this game. He's been able to get in the air, adjust, and get around the defender and finish. Wong draws the contact, will head to the foul line. And this is what I'm talking about. Beautiful skip court and then the adjustment in the air. Uh, this one right here, degree of difficulty off the charts. Nike Sabandi again. 
with the adjustment. With the ACC tournament starting on Tuesday, a reminder to all fans to download the ACC three-point challenge app presented by New York Life to help benefit the local boys and girls clubs. You can score points for your school and after the tournament, the local boys and girls club will receive a donation from New York Life based on their affiliated ACC team's final ranking. Greensboro is going to be wild. If the regular season is any indication, this league is wide open headed into champion. I would not be surprised uh, if any of the teams that go down there uh, goes on a run in the ACC tournament. And really, there's that much parity in this league. Diaz Graham, bullseye, two threes for the freshman. Jorge Diaz Graham delivering on a huge stage. And what that's going to do, he's hit two now. That's going to pull Omer away from the basket, and that's going to open up a driving lanes even more for the pit guards. And this is twice now. Again, Graham, they break off. They go to help out in the post, and Graham now has hit two threes. Neither one of them has hit the rim. Quick trigger off the inbound, and Miami back up by four. Crowd comes to its feet in the Watchco Center. Awesome atmosphere all first half long. Cummings on the drive. Finds Diaz Graham. Goes up with it. Tough take, and he missed it. Miami has a timeout, use it or lose it, and they elect to use it with 18 seconds left in what has been an eventful and really fun first half. Exactly what we thought uh, was going to be in this game. I think the big thing, Miami, uh, Jay, the difference, uh, Miami with 16 second chance points uh, in this first half. Remember, we go back uh, to that first matchup at Pittsburgh. Pitt was the team that dominated the second chance points. They had 17 second chance points uh, in that first matchup uh, at Pittsburgh. Right now in the first half, Miami dominating the offensive glass. Coming up at halftime, awesome that the nothing but net crew has come to Coral Gables. We got live studio for a game that'll decide who's the number one seed in the ACC tournament next week. And Jay, you almost feel like uh, there's a typo uh, in these stats. Total rebounds, Miami has 22, Pittsburgh only eight. That's a difference in this game. And Miami has used seven offensive rebounds to score 16 second chance points in this first half. Jordan Miller, kick to pack. Beats the buzzer, but it didn't rim in. Pittsburgh gets a stop at the end of the first half, but it's Miami that takes a four-point lead into halftime. Well, you couldn't ask for a better look to close out the half that time, uh, but Pitt Pittsburgh, I think the adjustment rebounding, but right now Miami goes into the half, up four. What an and the lead. This has been back and forth since the opening tip. Winner gets the number one seed in the ACC tournament in a couple of days in Greensboro. Miller going baseline, finds Poplar. He had the hot hand, only took three shots and he made them all from deep. Inside, Omir calling for it, gets it, swatted away. Federico, Federico to the rescue. That's why, for me, uh, he is at the top of the list for defensive player of the year. The hat right there, he heads hard on the ball screen got back and recovered, and then blocked the shot, and the key thing, Jay, he kept it in play, kept possession for his team. Big time defensive play by Federico, Federico. Burton going right into Wong, finishes strong, Jamarius Burton, he's up to 10 to lead Peyton scoring. I'm going right back to that matchup if I'm Pittsburgh. If Isaiah Wong is guarding him, I'll let him use his size advantage, Jamarius Burton, isolate him in the post, and make Miami make a decision. Do we come and double? 
Omir through contact. Perfect position to clean up his own spill. You know, in that first matchup we were just talking about where Pitt won, it was Jamarius Burton dominating that matchup with Wong down the stretch that won the Panthers that game. Here he is with the ball in his hands again. This time Poplar the matchup, passing off at a hard foul. Blake Hinson will head to the line. And that's all set up again. Jamarius Burton, they just break their playoff. They like to match up with him uh, in the post. Uh, break off your play, let him isolate on the wing, work his way down to the post. And then you go to double or you turn your head. Uh, he is such a good passer. Again, right here, you turn your head. Nice cut right here by Blake Henson. Foul shooting has been a strength for this pit team all season long. 77% from the line, which is a program best, and yet a shocking performance from the charity stripe on Wednesday night. They were 20 of 36 in the loss to Notre Dame. That cost them the game, but spoke to Jeff Capel about it today. He said, I trust our guys from the foul line. That, that's a big part of our success this season. And he felt like there was a little leprechaun sitting up on top <laughs> of the basket, knocking off all. And he said, look, I don't think we'll ever shoot that bad again uh, from the free throw line. And certainly on the road, uh, that is a recipe for disaster, missing that many. Miller hits it from three. Mike Bray's final home game, the invisible leprechaun, <laughs> whatever it was, in Pittsburgh battling back. Still a chance to win the ACC regular season. Down five on the road. Cummings, he's been quiet. Fading away. That's a tough take, and it rims out. And what a block out by O'Meara, keeping Federico, Federico off the glass. Both these teams really... Uh, doing a great job defensively in their screen and roll coverage. Intercepted by Hinson. Up the floor to Elliott. Rejected! Norchad O'Meara says, get that out of here, and a foul called on Cummins as Miami looked to break the other way. And Jeff Capel is hot. He felt like there was a foul oh, on this. Yeah, it looked like, again, from that angle, tough to see if there was not uh, any contact on his arm going up. But From that angle, he, he looked like he hacked. Yeah, it definitely did. It looked like there was a lot of arm on that, but no call. and Missed opportunity in transition off the turnover for Pitt. Poplar, step back. This time he missed it. First miss of the game. Miller keeps it alive. Second chance points, the name of the game. Miami already has 16. Poplar, no good. Miller still scrapping for it. And finally, Federico gathers it for Pittsburgh. Jay, I don't know the count, but Miami's probably missed about eight layups in this game. Hinson. Spinning into a double team, and he traveled. Wave off the basket. Pittsburgh started to get a little frustrated at the start of the second half. And credit uh, Miami's defense. Again, they've done a great job in their pick and roll coverage, and then they're active in the passing lanes. Five-point lead for the Hurricanes, and yet Isaiah Wong yet to make a basket. Poplar from three. He's red hot! Wooga Poplar, four threes, and Miami's up eight. Jay, I said it uh, at half. The adjustment, you have to be there on the catch uh, with Wooga Poplar. Sabandi, rise and slam! Send it in, Sabandi! What an answer to quiet this crowd down. His ability to attack the rim and then take flight that time, showing off the hops again. My goodness, that's a big time finish by Nike Sabandi. Miller got two to jump. Good recovery by Diaz Graham, and then a foul comes in. 
some eye popping plays right now. Well, I'm nicknaming him right now. But this one, Wooga Poplar, all name team. And then Air, Nike, Sabandi, take flight. We got a great game here. Take a look at our updated ACC standings. Virginia beating Louisville earlier today to finish the season 15-5 and five in ACC play. Gives Cavaliers a share of the regular season title. They'll share it with the winner of Pittsburgh and Miami. And both Pitt and Miami own that tiebreaker, beat Virginia head-to-head -head in the regular season. So the winner of our game right here, right now, will be your number one seed in the ACC tournament. And I think that's key, obviously, though. Uh, I think more so... Uh, for Pitt, uh, Jeff Capel, we spoke with him uh, this afternoon. They talked about going 1-0. and oh. uh, What a huge uh, boost this would be for them. Resume a booster being on the road to close out of the ACC regular season. You know, what a season it has been for Jeff Capel in Pittsburgh. This week ranked number 25 in the AP poll. First ranking since the 2015-2016 season. This fan base has been through a lot since then. A lot of losing, and they finally found the magic, bottled it up. Trailing by eight now. Remember, they came back in the final two minutes of this first meeting. They trailed by eight, went on an 11-0 run to win. So no matter how much this team is down, they are never out. Seven seconds to shoot. Cummings in attack mode. Gets the foul call. Nelly Cummings, a really quiet game for him, particularly how he's been playing as of late. Five points and four assists. His last five games, five straight games and double figures, averaging seven assists. He's been a real X factor for this Panthers team. And I think the big thing too, shooting 40% from the three point line in that five game stretch. Uh, but credit Miami, they've done a nice job of uh, contesting. Championship Sunday tomorrow. Nothing but net gets you started. Noon Eastern time and then 3 Eastern time. Keep it after the game for the Nothing But Net crew. They'll have you covered in what has been a wild ACC Women's Basketball Tournament Champ Week underway. Somebody gonna Hoist some hardware tomorrow. Miller, the spin cycle down the lane, flips it in. Jordan Miller, he's got 13. And that's a heads up play. He faked the dribble handoff and then went right down the middle of the lane. Miami cranking up the defensive intensity. Just as the momentum was reaching a fever pitch, North Chad O'Meara travels. Yeah, and that's twice now, though. He's got a rebound and tried to bring it up and run the break. Let's see if he shuffled his feet. Yeah, he shuffled his feet. Again, it was ever so subtle. But that quick replay right there looked like a travel. And as you said, uh, momentum really shifted. Can Pitt capitalize. Great feet inside. An easy finish for Diaz Graham. And that's a great pass by Blake Henson. Almost like a quarterback throwing it to a receiver before they're open. He saw him coming off that screen, threw it in anticipation he was going to come off clean, and he did. Omir lost his footing. Here comes Sabandi. Pittsburgh three on two. Cummings didn't pull the trigger, and he travels. We've seen more travels today than we've seen all season. And I think he passed up Nelly Cummings. He passed up a pretty good look against Sabandi in transition off that uh, miss uh, by Omir. Again, right here, I think he's open. He's got to let that one fly. He doesn't, and that's a pretty good closeout uh, by Jordan Miller. Stays down and forces a turnover, but I think Nelly Cummings passed one up right there. He's got to let that fly. Pack for three. Got it! Largest lead of the game for Miami.
Pittsburgh in the danger zone, and Hinson almost rolled in for an and one opportunity. He'll get two. And Nigel Pack, I call him logo range. This time, uh, just a hedge on the ball screen. They don't slow him down. The recovery is late, and Nigel Pack is a guy that you must be there uh, with him. He's got unlimited range. Great three-point shooter, 41% on the season. And what's so impressive is he's not just a catch-and-shoot guy. It's the ability to create that three off the dribble. And I think the adjustment now for Pitt, they were doing it in the first half. Uh, they were hedging hard and slowing the ball down. That time, uh, there was more a show and then get back, try to give uh, the guard a chance to get back underneath. But you must slow the ball down first. Hinson just hits the first. Eight point lead for Miami. They have certainly grabbed control of this game in the second half. Here's Pack from the logo. Can't connect. Hits the shot clock pit ball. And that's a better recovery that time by Nike Sabandi. Again, you'll live with that. As long as you're there with him, if he hits a contested deep logo three, nothing you can do about it. You just don't want him coming off clean. Better pick and roll defense that time by Pittsburgh. Diaz Graham, floater falls. He has eight points. Three of four for the freshman out of Spain. He's providing a big boost off the bench. Talented. Uh, that's a seven-footer right there. Again, he showed off the three-point shooting range. That time, head fake and then a floater. Uh, that is a one-skilled seven-footer. Tough take, and Nigel Pack buries it. He is really starting to heat up. Sabandi attacking pack gets O'Meara in the air. Two foul shots coming. Well, Jay, for me, it's a lot uh, for six man of the year. Uh, I, I think you've almost just handed to this guy right here, Nike Sabandi. Uh, his ability to come in off the bench for Jeff Capel really has been huge. He's embraced that role. And he has had some huge games. He would start for pretty much a lot of teams oh, uh, yeah. in the ACC. Uh, but he's embraced that role off the bench. Swirls around, does not drop. Sounds like you're going to have a lot of Pittsburgh and Miami on your ACC ballot. And I put a premium on where teams finish again. Uh, well, there's other guys, I think, with some impressive stats. Uh, but... Uh, these two teams right here, uh, I think they're guys that have put up some really good numbers uh, that have translated to winning and being at the top of the ACC standing. 28 minutes into this game, Isaiah Wong doesn't have a single made basket, and yet Miami leads by seven. Joseph tangled up with Burton. Diaz Graham comes in. Jorge Diaz Graham fighting for it. And a timeout called. Pittsburgh with the basketball, trailing by seven. The ACC on the line between these two teams. I'm a screen addicted tween. And if I'm not posting on. Locked into that number two seed. And the one thing we could agree on is anybody could go in, string together some wins, and win it all. We saw that a year ago with Virginia Tech. Absolutely. I would not be surprised to see the same thing happen again this year. Uh, you are absolutely right. I think a wide-open uh, ACC tournament. As we take a look, though, Blake Henson continues uh, to shoot at a high clip. His third made three. He leads Pittsburgh in scoring on the season and so far does today. 13 points, brings the Panthers back within four. 
Isaiah Wong hasn't made a basket all game. Puts one up, finally connects. Lead back to six. The Diaz Graham twins getting extended playing time off the bench. Federico, Federico, usually the, the big man for Pittsburgh. He's only played 16 minutes, three points, and three fouls. As we step aside again, Pittsburgh's made three in a row, trying to battle back down six on the road against Miami. When it's tournament time, we don't go big. Miami, a six-point lead, and Huck looked no further than second-chance points. Yeah, you can look at a lot of things in this game, but that pretty much sums up uh, the difference in this game. Uh, really difficult uh, to be ahead. I'm actually surprised they're only trailing six. Uh, the rebounding numbers really are glaring. Uh, 29 total rebounds for Miami, only 13 for Pitt. And what's so ironic is in the first matchup in Pittsburgh, which the Panthers won, Pittsburgh dominated Miami on the glass. Jim Laranega told us that was the reason Miami lost that game was the rebounding margin. Clearly a point of emphasis, and Miami has stepped up big. Coming out of the timeout, Joseph rips it away. The defensive intensity, too, for Miami has certainly ratcheted up. And both teams, though, really doing a great job. Team defense, uh, the bigs have really hedged hard on ball screens, and then the recoveries uh, really have been impressive by both teams. Bensley Joseph, who got the steal. Now can he cash in on the other end? Leaves it off for Beverly, and he'll get two at the line. Joseph uh, has played really a solid game. Again, maybe not a lot of points, but his defense and an ability to make plays like that have been huge in this game. This right here, again, draw two and then kick. Uh, but I think the biggest contribution has been his defense uh, on Jamarius Burton. Uh, that last play coming up with the steal. Again, both these teams very deep. And when they go to their bench, they really do not lose much. Beverly cashes in both free throws. Miami showing pressure. Really for the first time today. In the final 10 minutes, you get the feeling Jamarius Burton will have the game on his back for Pittsburgh. Like many games this season, and he has delivered. This time Sabandi working on Wong. Hinson from the corner. Misfires, he had made three threes. Was looking for a fourth. Burton. Steals it away. Race to the hoop. Pivots around, kicks out to Cummings. Burton working on O'Meara. Hinson tries it again. Can't connect again. Miami's defense all over Pittsburgh right now. And the crowd loves it. Well, that might have been their best defensive possession of the game. Individually, Norfat O'Meara, uh, his individual defense that time uh, on Jamarius Burton was the key. They didn't have to help off of him. And they forced a contested three. Trapped in the corner, and it's a turnover. And that's a great job of knowing the scouting report by Pitt. Of uh, the first, Jamarius Burton knew Beverly was going to try to reject the ball screen, the double ball screen, and beat him baseline. He didn't bite for it. And then the lock and trail by Nelly Cummings uh, to force pack into a turnover. Uh, that's just really understanding what they were trying to do on that play. So, Bandy. He misfires. Burton, offensive rebound, puts it in. 
That ends a three-minute scoring drought for Pittsburgh. And that was a big one. Oh, Jamarius Burton on the offensive glass. Pittsburgh riding Hinson and Burton down the stretch in a game that'll decide who's the one seed in next week's ACC tournament. Wong fouled shooting three. Three critical foul shots coming for Isaiah Wong. And that's all set up because his shiftiness. Again, he's setting you up through the legs, and now he thinks uh, he's pulling up for the jumper. Little has he. And he is such a tough matchup one-on-one. -on -one. Next Saturday afternoon, as ACC basketball is in champ week, watch some ACC lacrosse. It starts with a terrific women's game, Notre Dame-Syracuse at noon, and then a men's doubleheader to follow. Top five matchup, Ohio State-Notre Dame, and then Towson and Virginia. And Jay, with those three free throws, Isaiah Wong uh, set a program record for single season ACC only free throws made with 87. Largest lead of the game for Miami. Pittsburgh with their backs against the wall. And you couldn't even hear the whistle. That's how loud it is here at the Watsko Center. Ted Valentine blew his whistle and people kept playing because you could not hear it. A deafening crowd that's trying to will Miami to the finish line. Get the Canes to hang a banner here at the Watsko Center next year if they could hold on to this lead. At Papa John. Well, Miami leads by nine, which is the largest lead of the game. Remember, in the first meeting back in Pittsburgh, Miami led by eight with two minutes and five seconds left. Pitt ended the game on an 11-0 run. You know Jeff Capel's reminding his guys down the stretch that they've been capable of comebacks all season long. They have, but I think with this team right here, in particular, uh, this Miami team, uh, they've really done a great job uh, contesting, but then uh, on the defensive glass, they have not allowed Pitt any second chance opportunities. Uh, they have shut down Hinson and Burton. Those are the two leading scorers for Pittsburgh. And in this second half, they nothing's coming easy. Right on cue, Burton rejected at the rim by Norchad O'Meara. And the key thing again, kept possession for his team. On the other end, can't get it to go. Tons of contact, no call. Hinson and O'Meara still tangled up. They are still down. So four on four, Cummings cashes in. Pittsburgh takes advantage of the four on four opportunity. And just like that, it's a two possession game. Wow. More contact, Burton and Wong, nothing called. Pack fades away. Most of the action happening off ball right now. Well, they've been consistent. I think that's the key word. These rest, they've had been consistent. It's been a physical game. Now you know, going to the hole, there's going to be contact, so you better be strong with the ball. Cummings wasn't strong there, lost it. Gets it back. Thought about a three. Shot clock did not reset. Five seconds to shoot. And Burton called for an offensive foul. Jamarius Burton can't believe it. Believe he lowered his shoulder into Nigel Pack. Now let's see right here. Yeah, again, yep. that's that's easy. Again, he kind of threw his body into him. It's one thing if they were already together, but he went and initiated the contact. And I think that's why the call was fouled. Oh. Jim Larinaga takes a timeout. His team leading by six will step aside as well. This is going to be a fun finish. At Buffalo Wild Wings, the deals don't stop. Buy one, get one half off Wing Tuesdays. Buy one, get one free boneless Thursdays. And wing bundles from $9.99. Only at Buffalo Wild Wings. 
I'm a screen addicted tween. And if I'm not posting on social media, I don't feel seen. Oh my God, mom, you gotta no. look at this. No, keeping my eyes on the road is paying off with DriveWise. Boring. Get DriveWise from all state and save for avoiding mayhem. Well, this game means so much. Winner gets to hang a banner. Regular season ACC champions, the number one seed in the ACC tournament. And even if you didn't know those things, just watch how these two teams are playing. The intensity, the physicality, you know that they are leaving it all out on the floor. Long rejected from behind. It'll be pit ball. Uh, two well-coached teams and two teams executing at a high level on the defensive end. Again, we talk a lot about their offense. I've been impressed with this in this game. Both teams defensively have been solid. Hinson, that's a deep three. Got it! Blake Hinson from the parking lot cuts the lead in half. Uh, there's logo range and then there's half court range. Uh, that one was almost at the half court mark. My goodness. One possession game. ACC on the line. Wong wants it. He gets it. Lines up a three. Can't connect. Offensive rebound. Poplar. It's good. Wooga Poplar is red hot. Five for five from three. Missed layup on the other end. Miami, Poplar. That would have taken the roof off. You could not ask for a better look. What a beautiful play. Wong with the pass uh, to Pack, and then the extra one. The crowd has been standing for the last 10 possessions. Sabandi trying to quiet the crowd. Draws the foul, it's on the floor. And this right here, well, that is a deep three by Blake Henson. And then on the other side, Wooga Poplar. Uh, he really, I think, has been uh, the story of this game. Uh, he has provided a nice offensive boost uh, for this Miami club. Pitch shooting one and one in the bonus the rest of the way. Poplar five for five from three before that recent miss. All 15 points have come from deep. And Jay, that's why both these teams are so dangerous. It's not just one guy. Uh, they have great balance. In particular, when they go to their bench or some of their complimentary players, uh, their ability to score and make plays when the Stars are not having a great game. Hinson all over Miller. Dangerous lefty. Trying to muscle it. Got it to Pack who misses the layup. Bounces out to Wong. Poplar wide open again. He's missed two in a row. But Norchad O'Meer flies in on a wreck attack. No foul, so Pitt will get the basketball. The fans right behind us are livid that there was no foul call after Poplar had stolen it away. And I think they're calling it incidental contact again. Mm, yeah, he just, again, and from that angle there, it looked like they were just both going for the ball, and he stepped on Henson's foot. Originally, I thought he got a little hip check, but in that instance there, it looked like he stepped on his foot and lost his footing. So Bandy, way too much on it. That's an air ball. Pack in attack mode. Foul called. That was Pitt's last foul to give. Big time players show up in big time games. Nor Chad O'Meara doing just that. He's got his case up by six. For a couple of these, Nor 
Chad O'Meara has impacted this game on both ends of the court, in particular uh, on the defensive and offensive glass. He's got a double-double, 15 points, 12 boards, three of them offensive. And Jim Laranega calls him uh, one of the best rebounders uh, he has ever seen. And he's seen a lot of basketball, Kotel. That's high praise. Battle for the ball. Sabandi has it. All the way to the rim. Misses the layup. It'll stay Pitt's way. 3.34 to go. Six-point game. Finishing up on O'Meara, an Arkansas State transfer who has proven he's a power five player this season. Coach Al compares him to Kenneth Farid. I love that comment. Absolutely spot on with that one, but this right here. Also uh, spot on, Blake Hinson. He is willing Pittsburgh back into this game. That's his fifth three. And he is so tough to match up with because of his quick release and high elevation on his threes. Out of bounds underneath, beautifully executed by Pitt. One possession game, Poplar the answer. It's good! Wooga Poplar, six threes, he's unconscious. Jeff Capel does not argue. That's another call. And again, it's because he's running into him. Again, if he's standing still, that's fine. But he's throwing his body in uh, to the defensive player. And again, that's Poplar getting it done on both ends. A star being born on the final day of the regular season. Wooga Poplar, 18 points on six made threes. He's been a handful for Burton on the defensive end. And they're going to take a look at this. Now, again, I don't think there's much there. He basically is trying to get position. Uh, what Jamarius Burton needs to do is seal in that situation. Again, Poplar is fronting him. That's fine. You don't get the initial post-entry pass. Reverse it to the top of the key, and then you'll have a seal. But he's trying to create space by throwing his body into them. But is there anything flagrant? I don't think so. I think he's just trying uh, to get established post position. Common foul. Miami up six, 2.45 to go. When these two teams met at the end of January, they led by eight with two minutes to go. It ended on an 11-0 run. They would have to find similar magic here. Yeah, and I think it's going to start, obviously, on this end right here. The rebounding continues to be an issue uh, for Pittsburgh in this game. Miami, 13 offensive rebounds. And it's created 25 second-chance points. Burton not giving Poplar an inch. 10 seconds to shoot. Here's Wong, he's been really quiet today. Only nine points. Fading away, off the window, no good. Amir, an offensive rebound, but he could not tiptoe and stay in bounds. Hit ball. Well, when I asked Jim Laranega what makes a North Chad Omir such a good rebounder, he said he is relentless in his pursuit of the ball. Almost came up with another offensive rebound right there. Foul called. Reach in on Nigel Pack. And he knew right away that's not a good foul. Obviously, uh, Pittsburgh, very good free throw shooting team. Uh, you do not want to put them on the line in that situation. One and one, Pittsburgh 10 of 13 from the line today. Burton, an 84% foul shooter on the season. He has been clutched time and time again for this pit team.
Missed it. Still a five-point game with two minutes to play. The ACC on the line. Look at this matchup right here. Burton uh, versus Wong. Thrown away. Miscommunication for Miami. A costly turnover. Ball back to Pitt. And that's all set up again, Jay. Federico Federico does a great job hedging on ball screens, able to stop and slow down uh, the person coming off the screen and then recover. Burton in attack mode. Kicks it out. Sabandia three. Short. Wong rips it away, but Burton gets it back. Jamie Lucky says Burton had his foot on the end line. So it's Miami ball. You can't ask for a better look. Again, Jamarius Burton dribble drive. Kick out to Sabandi. He's wide open. Again, if you're Jeff Capel in that situation, you'll live with that offensive possession. That's a wide open look. Each team with two timeouts. It certainly doesn't have to foul here. They can play this possession out. And Jay, we saw Miami and shooter on working on this scenario right here, uh, being prepared for Pitt to go full court pressure. Shot clock under 10. Miller on the move. Splits the double team and draws the foul. With a minute and three seconds left in regulation, it's Jordan Miller headed to the foul line. Again, Miami ISO. Uh, they just break off their offense. They like uh, that matchup with Jordan Miller uh, matched up against Henson. Uh, they go ice, put him on the wing, let him go one on one. Seventy-eight percent foul shooter on the season. Nothing but the bottom of the net. And Jay, I think he is a guy. Jordan Miller. Uh, yes, Isaiah Wong, Nigel Pack, Omer. Those guys have been really good. But I think he's kind of the X factor guy for this Miami team. Timeout, Pittsburgh, with exactly one minute remaining. Trailing by seven. Jeff Capel's team has not made a basket in two minutes and 32 seconds, and it's allowed Miami to separate themselves at the end of this game. Well, the balance that they have, uh, Isaiah Wong, not a great game today to his standards. Nine points, one to nine from the floor, but uh, back to my earlier point about Jordan Miller. 15 points, eight boards, three assists. And we, it feels like we don't talk about him as much as we probably should. No, you're right. And he is uh, very good. He does a little bit of everything for uh, this Miami team. Uh, but uh, look at Poplar. Yeah. Uh, his three-point shooting ability in this game, I think that was the difference uh, thus far. Six made threes for the sophomore out of Philadelphia. Only a 38% three-point shooter on the season. He made the first five he took. And sometimes when a game plan is, all right, we got to stop Wong, Pack, Miller, and Omir. Okay, we'll let Wooga Poplar beat you. And he did. And that's why, again, I think Miami is a team uh, that uh, I would not be surprised to see them deep in the NCAA tournament. The balance that they have. Uh, yes, they have Wong. Yes, they have uh, Nigel Pack. But what do you do with guys like Jordan Miller, Wooga Poplar? I think also Joseph and Beverly were huge in this game uh, off the bench uh, for uh, Jim Laranega. So, again, they have deep a uh, roster. Uh, still, though, plenty left in this game a minute. Uh, they're up seven. Now, I think for Pittsburgh, you have plenty of time. You don't necessarily need a three uh, in this situation right away, but you got to get into your offense quick. And you do need the score. Can't take too much time off the clock. Burton almost traveled there. 10 seconds has already come off the clock. Sabandi, much needed bucket. Nike Sabandi delivers. Full court pressure on. Double team, Miller in trouble. And that's a push off. 
Jordan Miller called for an offensive foul. It's pit ball. An easy call to make again. He just lowered his shoulder. Great job of trapping in the corner. That's the last place you want to go if you're Miami. You, know, you go to the dead corner right there. Pitt does a great job of trapping. And yeah, that's easy. I mean, that's an easy uh, call to make. He extended his arm and pushed off. Uh, you must know in that situation, you cannot catch the ball that deep in the corner. Jim Laranega has taken a timeout. So each team with one timeout remaining in the final 44 seconds of regulation. Miami leads by five, but it's Pitt basketball. It's a Hurricanes team that has had such an impressive season, 23 and six. Could very well be the number one seed in the ACC tournament if they hold on to this lead. But in the games they've lost, they've led in every single second half. And it's surprising, again, with their experience, uh, that's really uh, a surprising uh, number uh, to have that many games uh, where they've led and they've given up leads. So, again, uh, right now, plenty of ball left. Same thing. I like Pittsburgh's last uh, possession. You don't necessarily need to settle for a three. You got to get into your offense quick. Hinson fires the three. Too much on it. Long the rebound. Up the court. Miller's there. He rocks the rim. Miami inches closer to the ACC regular season title. Hinson down the lane, cuts it to five. Jeff Capel uses his final timeout. 27.3 left, five point game. Well, a couple things. But uh, if you're Pittsburgh, you must have somebody back playing safety. Uh, that previous play for Miami, uh, they beat them up the court with the long pass. Nobody back playing safety, so they got a wide open dunk. Miami on the other end, you cannot catch the ball in the dead corner. Uh, you must give yourself some space to operate, and then when you catch it, you must be strong with the ball, either step through or find somebody cutting because you know Pittsburgh's going to trap and try to force another turnover. Now, the balance scoring for Miami has been impressive today, but all season long, they're one of only two teams in the country with four players averaging at least 13 and a half points per game. And today, Poplar, Miller, O'Meara, They've led the way, and Pack and Wong have chipped in with nine. Balanced scoring, and again, that's what you want as a coach. It's not just one guy uh, on any given night. Uh, they can have somebody, whether it's somebody coming off the bench or one of their starters, uh, go off and have really good games. Who do you want at the foul line here if you're the Hurricanes? Well, and that's one of the good things about this Miami team. All their wings and guards are really good free throw shooters. If you're Pitt, if Omer is out on the court, he's the one guy I think you want to try to get the ball in his hands and foul him immediately. And let's see how Pittsburgh lines up. Again, you have to be mindful of any home run play if Miami tries to throw it over the top and get somebody going down the other end. Miami trying to cling to a win that would make them the number one seed in the ACC tournament. They get to hang a banner here at the Watsko Center for being the regular season co-champions with Virginia. 27.3 seconds separates them from history. Juan the inbounder. Omir in trouble, bounces it off Federico, Federico smartly. Jeff Capel all over Tim Cloggerty. Puts and his arm around him, and they will take a review. I thought Omir cleanly got it off Federico, Federico, but let's take another look. Yeah, that right there, it looks like it went off Federico, Federico. Well, let's take another look from a different angle. Again, you cannot catch the ball that dead in the corner. Yeah, that, but again, that right there looks at, like it hits Federico and then bounces back on the line. Now, again, now, can't tell if his foot was out. Yeah, that right there, again, from that angle, 
and Lester calling him out of bounds where his foot came out of bounds, but it doesn't look like it gets there, and then it bounces off Federico, Federico. I think it's going to stay Miami ball. And you need indisputable evidence to overturn the call on the floor. The call on the floor was Miami ball. Yeah, and I think Isaiah Wong missed somebody running long. Uh, again, there was nobody back playing safety. It's there. You just got to throw it with conviction. Make sure, okay, that it goes out there so only your guy can go and get it. I think they'll have it a chance if Pittsburgh lines up in that same alignment. I think Miami will have a chance to run somebody long and see if you can get either a layup or run a little bit more clock. Miami ball, Pittsburgh. No timeouts remaining. Miami has one, and they also have a five-point lead. Everybody up for Pitt. Into Nigel Pack. And he stepped on the line. It's Pitt ball. That time, Pack did step on the line. He's saying he was pushed. Take another look. Yeah, that's two great defensive plays uh, for Pitt. This time resulting in a turnover. The Panthers have life. Now can they cash in? 20 seconds left. Down five. Hinson. He's a big shot taker. Oh, and he's a big shot maker. Two point game. 13 seconds to go. This ACC regular season title is coming down to the final seconds. You can't play better defense. Isaiah Wong is there. He's fading away. I'm not even sure he started off looking at the basket. Again, he's connected with them. He just turns and fires and knocks down a three. Now, on the replay, was his foot on the line? Yeah. Because they okay. ruled it a three. Hard to tell from that angle. I think we were blocked from Isaiah Wong. Here's a good see. look. Yeah, yeah his foot on foot's the on the line. So that's that should a be two. a two. So instead of a two-point game, this would be a three-point game. And if you're Miami, you'll take any cushion you can get. Remember, the Hurricanes lost at the buzzer exactly a week ago to Florida State. They have led for this entire second half. The key thing is inbounding the ball. They've had issues uh, the last two possessions uh, inbounding the ball. They're trying to run a Nigel Pack on a little wheel cut to get him the ball. I think they got to try to get somebody running either over the top or get him till he's coming to the basket or coming back to the ball. Key thing is you must inbound the ball and you cannot turn it over if you're Miami in this situation. Uh, on the other end, uh, Pitt. Again, uh, they're not face guarding. They're actually playing on the side. Key thing is you just don't want to get beat long and give up an uncontested layup. Miami used its final timeout, so both teams with no timeouts remaining for the remainder of regulation. The scoreboard still says 78-76, but I thought Jamie Lucky was over at the monitor. They should have overturned that to a two. It was clear as day that his foot was on the line. And yet our scoreboard still says 78-76. Yeah, that's actually huge. Long the inbounder. No timeouts in trouble. Finally gets it into O'Neill. Costly seconds ticking off this clock. Finally the foul comes in with 9.3. I cannot believe they let that three stand. Yeah, I mean, his foot was clearly, I mean, that's not even a uh, debate. Uh, his foot was clearly on the line, and I'm not sure how they did not uh, overturn that unless there's an issue with the uh, scorekeeper, but that clearly was a two. Wow. Omir misses the front end. Pittsburgh with a chance to tie or win it. No timeouts. Hinson, a heave. No good. 